Hi there and welcome to a very exciting vlog. This is something I've been looking forward to for two years now. My most anticipated book of the year and I figured I would also dovetail it with it being my 100th book of the year which is my Goodreads goal so that's all very exciting. And I figured why not document it. That book if you are not familiar with my rantings and ravings about it is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test are the previous two books to this. Some of my favorite books ever. They destroyed me completely emotionally and I expect nothing different from this one. I actually did order a signed copy from The Ripped Bodice. It's all very exciting. It also came with a couple of um, goodies in it. So a bookmark for Libro FM. Another bookmark, it looks like this is from The Ripped Bodice, very cute. And then <laughs> there are stickers, very exciting. And there's an octopus with a heart in a computer. No idea what that's about, but very excited to find out. These are super cute. And then the last thing is a, a print of the couple in this. I know this one's about Juan, who is the cousin of Michael from the first book and he's related to people in the second book too. Unclear, I have not reread those books. I remember saying I wanted to reread them before I started on this one, but I didn't. It's about 340 pages. I should be able to get through it in good time. I am saying this is my 100th book. I have currently only actually read 98.7 books. The other book I'm reading right now is The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher, but I'll finish that one tonight or tomorrow. And it's going really well. Very different vibe from this one, uh, but I'll give you a review of that one too. That was a lie. I never gave you a review of The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. It was good. I, I feel like it got progressively worse for me because I feel like you can't really keep up momentum in horror. So I would say the first part was four stars and the, the middle was three stars and the end was two stars. Rounding it up to a three. I still really enjoyed it and I want to check out other stuff by her. As we hang out for the next couple days while I read this and you will probably see me cry. I'm really excited. I'm really scared. I'm rambling now because I'm scared to start this because there is so much build up with this book. I'm gonna shut up now and start reading. Whew. Wish me luck. It has been a really long time since I've had a second location in a vlog, but I have one today. We're staying in a hotel tonight, so I'm in my lovely king size bed where I'm just gonna hang out for the next couple hours before I go and join the boy. But let me show you this place, because it's huge. There's also a big old TV on the wall. And then out here, there is this thing which won't shut up, I'm working on it. Another TV, a couch, a chair, a big old bathroom with two sinks and hi and probably the world's smallest bathtub and then back out here we have a workstation and beautiful hotel art and it's all very exciting so yeah this is where i'm going to be hanging out for the next few hours so uh cue a montage i guess four chapters. That was actually really fun. Switching location every chapter. I might have to try that at home. But it's so good. I forgot how much her writing just instantly connects with me. Like it's not an effort. Those 33 pages flew by. I didn't even have to think about it. Definitely indications of some tough stuff happening but I already love Anna <laughs> so much. Quan had one chapter too so like it is dual perspective but it's not one and then the other one so we got mostly Anna and I love her I love her so much and I see so much of myself in her I'm gonna see how far I can get in this before I have to go see people but it's so good I, I like I'm not even in my head when I'm thinking about it I'm just along for the ride 
and I love it. I love it very much. All right, the bed is obviously the winner, so I'm going to read here for the next little while, but I'm gonna try to find a playlist to listen to. Usually I just listen to this one on Spotify called Deep Focus. I'll link it below, I really like it. I don't like anything too rhythmic, but seeing as this features a violinist, I wonder if I can find something violin specific. I also don't like covers. There's a couple of playlists here, like violin covers for studying. That sounds what I want, but I, if I know what song it is, it's gonna distract me from reading. Let's just do violin greatest. This might be a lot. Let's give it a go. got a mention of the octopus so I'm on it oh wait is this it's been five seconds um is this my octopus friend or something I think I won the Oscar for like documentary last year I might have to look into that nope play the music fun thank you Maybe in another chapter, that'll be good. I wish I had brought my uh, tabs to tab this because it's just so good. She says that he's disastrously gorgeous when he smiles. Too cute. I don't know if this is a thing, but I'm gonna do my very best to make it a thing. If I can figure out how to turn on a shower. This is the height of luxury. hotel is super weird because I'm trying to find somewhere to put the camera that's like the right height and right now the only place I can find is inside of a microwave so have fun with that I'm 100 pages in which was my goal for today and it was exactly on a chapter break so I feel like Helen Huang knows us it's really good it's it's so interesting because like it's not sad yet but I feel like I'm on the verge of tears all the time either because of something adorable that happened or just like I am already so invested in this relationship that like I need to protect these precious angel babies of mine. A couple of things that I wanted to point out that were fun on page 63 Anna has Quan over to her apartment for the first time and she says he considers the books that overflow my bookshelves and spill onto the floor and tabletops, the mismatched throw blankets and decorative pillows on my sofa, and the dozen or so candles placed in random locations. Anna is all of us. I think every single reader can relate to piles of books, decorative throw blankets, and candles. Like, that's the aesthetic of book two. I thought it was very cute. And then my other favorite part was, I kid you not, on the very bottom of page 68, it, they kiss for the first time. And then 69 is a makeout scene, which is very funny. And I feel like she's doing it on purpose. The door keeps wanting to close. Anyway, that's 100 pages. I am, I love it so much. Quan is such an adorable soft boy. I love him. Have I said what this is about? Because I really don't know anything before going in, but now I know some stuff. Stay open. 
Anna is a violinist who, it, it's not a spoiler because like you could tell immediately, is somewhere on the autism spectrum. All of the other books by in this series by Helen Huang have had a, an MC with autism. So I am just kind of expecting that to become a thing and we get hints that Quan is recovering from cancer. He's not very open about it, so we know very little about it. So I don't know where the story is going to go from there, from that perspective. The kickoff of this is Anna's boyfriend, before he proposes, wants to make sure that they're right for each other so that they can take a break and see other people and if they still like each other, then they'll get married. He sucks, I hate him. <laughs> and Anna doesn't really have a choice, like if someone wants an open relationship, you break up or you're in the open relationship. So she's trying to do a one night stand and Quan is also not ready for a relationship, but they're just drawn to each other and they're both having a rough time, but they're so communicative. Quan is like really the perfect man. <laughs> The relationship is so precious. This is living up to every expectation that I have. It, it, it doesn't feel like a chore to read. Like, I have not taken a break. I have not turned on a TV in a hotel, which has cable. I could be watching HGTV right now, but instead I'm reading this book and I'm not mad about it. Although I might stop now. I have to leave for the thing pretty soon. So I might give myself an HGTV treat after I just dissed it. That's the fam going, so that's my cue to shut up. Oh, I just need to mess with the floor plan now right. to see, to see where that leads us. It's small. It's gonna be cute, it's gonna be cozy, and it's gonna be our adorable little magic fairy cottage. So it's been a minute, I'm back where I belong. The party was super fun, but hotel sleep is never what you want it to be, so I was exhausted the next day, and then I napped during the day and went to bed early. It was a whole thing, I barely read anything, but I did get to part two, which is called Dirt. And I think I know what the conflict is going to be now. And I think that's why I've been avoiding it for over 24 hours now. I think it's going to revolve around Anna's family. Specifically, we've already met her sister who sucks. She might be the worst person in a book I've ever read other than like a serial killer. I hate her so much and I don't I don't know what's gonna happen but I'm already on edge and Anna's not gonna be happy and I'm really worried about it but I need to read it it's gonna be good being destroyed emotionally is a good time damn it there's a strong possibility that by my next update I will have cried I'm on page 150 right now take your bets put them in the comments what page number do you think I'm gonna cry at Quick update just to say I hate everyone in this book. I hate Julian. I hate him so much. I hate the sister. I hate the mom. I'm so angry for Anna at every turn and I'm livid. And the self-deprecating stuff that Anna is saying is so hard, but like I get it. Oh, but it's so hard. I should say I'm on page 238. I haven't cried yet, but honestly giving this update is making my eyes prick prick it's just heartbreaking all of the stuff that anna puts up with that she thinks she has to put up with and in some ways does like she has to conform to her family and it's destroying her and she's talking a lot about masking from the autistic side of it but i think we can all relate to the idea of pretending to be someone that you're not in order to please somebody else and it's it sucks <laughs> and it's heartbreaking and Julian needs to go away. Definitely wanted to say die but I'm not promoting violence but maybe for Julian I am. Oh oh it makes me so mad. Yeah that'll look okay for you know doing all the crying. I finished it. This one didn't have me in the fetal position the way some of the other endings did but it was still so good. For those of you who placed your bets on when I was gonna cry, 260 was the first time, and then from page 300 on, the last 30 pages was like every other page I was crying, so that was cool. The thing with this author's books is <laughs> the worst, best, 
the part that makes me cry the most is the author's note because she's just so personal and she talks about how this was the most personal book for her to write and I think you can tell in how much this is Anna's story. This isn't as much a romance as it is a contemporary coming of age, discovering yourself and your place in the world kind of story. The first 150 pages are most of the romance, which is probably my favorite part, but I totally understand why the book went the way that it did. Whew, I'm gonna start crying again. If I had a criticism of this, it would be that I wish it had focused more on the romance, but I totally understand why it did. I think really I just, I need to be friends with Anna and Quan. I just need them in my life. And I can't have that because they're fictional and this is all I'm gonna get and I'm gonna cry about it. A lot of what they go through in this book is hard, mostly on Anna's side. And so you do see it a bit from Quan's side of like being the partner of someone going through a hard time and how do you help with that? what can you do and that was all you know very well done but I I do want to just see them be happy and it ends happy a realistic level of happy I was very happy that certain things didn't wrap up cleanly that just wouldn't have been honest to this kind of story I hope they're okay I'm sure that they are the author's note also talks about how she's really sorry that the book got delayed like it was a year or two after it should have come out and how she's sorry about that but also really grateful that there are people who have been waiting for this book and I just I don't know as someone who has been actively waiting for this book it makes me feel bad that I am focused on an end product when I have no idea what goes into making it and she had a rough time in the last few years and that never occurred to me that something serious could be happening you just assume standard cases of writer's block and stuff but I don't I don't know it's hard because I think that I connect with her book so much and so much of herself is in the books that like I have a stupid parasocial relationship with her and I think we're friends and I feel bad that I wasn't checking up on her or something like it's really stupid I know that I'm sorry for missing that not that it was like public knowledge or anything we're not friends it's stupid I just my brain has convinced me that we are friends and I'm, I'm taking it personally anyway that's the heart principle <laughs> five stars this is making me also want to go back and reread everything because this one didn't have me in the fetal position and I'm wondering what the other ones did that did that to me or am I just like in a better emotional place now that I can handle something like this okay? Anyway, that's the heart principle. I'm done now. Is this the end of the video? I've now read a hundred books. Oh, we should update my Goodreads. That would be a cute little way to end this. Here's footage of it right now. All right, thank you for joining me. Sorry you got to see me cry, but I did warn you about it. I guess that's it for me. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.